Jed, what's your definition of a, a real leader? I think a real leader is somebody that has a vision, passion, and, and isn't afraid to fail, leading their troops, leading their organization. And I think a lot of times you see leaders that they're not willing to fail in order to have success. And, and that's, I think, one of the downfalls in leadership in, in industry today. It's interesting to hear a young guy uh, making a comment like that. You find yourself in a, a world uh, filled with people with perhaps a lot more experience. Um, do you think that youth has been an advantage in a funny way? It, it has been. And, you know, I, I find it now, you know, I, my wife just gave birth to our son about five and a half months ago. And I certainly understand now the, the reason why some people don't take as much risk as what they did earlier on in their career. And I think I was young enough when we started, you know, our sort of rebuilding the 49ers, building a new football stadium. You know, you were young enough to where failure didn't even enter your mind. And so let's talk about the stadium a little bit now. So it's, uh, it's something that sprung out of the ground really quickly. Um, tell us your vision behind the stadium and what you're trying to achieve with it. Well, I think what you want to do is you want to embody Northern California. You want to make sure that you have a great fan experience and you want to make sure that the things that you're doing in the stadium fit with the values of your community. And whether that's being the smartest building and using the, all the technology that's here in Silicon Valley, you know, making sure you bring in the, the wine culture and the food culture from Napa to San Francisco and make sure that you embrace sustainability. You know, we'll be the first lead certified NFL stadium and we will also be net neutral to the grid. So our 10 home games will be completely powered by the sun. Now the default is that if things are going to be green or sustainable, they're going to cost more, or they're not going to perform as well. Um, what's your take on all of that? I think you have to be sustainably and functionally green. And, and that's really what we've tried to do. We wanted to make sure that this is something that enhances the fan experience, but also is the right thing for the community, is the right thing for everybody that's involved. And we haven't seen anything where we will be, you know, not performing at, at peak performance and that we'll be spending more money than that what we would have otherwise. I think it's the right fit and it's the right way to, to build a stadium and to build any project in today's day and age. So it's possible to do good and do well at the same time? Yeah, I think that's what we try to do. And, and I think that's what we strive to do. You know, the 49ers motto is to win with class. And that's really what we've tried to do both on and off the field. And, and I think the stadium will be representative of that as, as well as our team on the field. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the opportunities that arise as a result of that decision that you took to build a sustainable stadium. What doors does that open up for you? Well, I think you see a lot more people want to be involved, whether it's from the sponsorship side. I do think that there's a, a premium for some of your tickets and some of your suites and definitely some of your sponsorships. And it just opens a door to a lot of other opportunities that, that aren't otherwise there. But I think ultimately it just makes your fan base feel connected because that's so important in the Bay Area. Sustainability is very, very important. You know, Teddy Roosevelt coined the term conservation at the Commonwealth Club here at the turn of the 20th century. And I think we're trying to continue to build on that and, and continue to make sure that California, Northern California specifically, is a leader in conservation. So building the stadium is the first step. Uh, once it's up and, and running, it needs to be operated. And will the sustainability theme carry through into how you operate the stadium? Absolutely. So the way we built the stadium, we built the majority of our suites on, on one side of the building. So sort of an office tower on top of the lower bowl of the stadium. So when you look at your energy consumption, that's where the majority of energy is consumed. So when you're not hosting people in those suites, then you're not really consuming a lot of energy in your building. And I think that allows us to be a little bit more functionally green. On top of that suite tower, we built out a green roof that obviously is, is more efficient for energy usage. But on top of that, you'll be able to get a thousand people up there for events, to watch sporting events, to watch other things that are going on, be able to use that 365 days a year, and that's where you become functionally green. Do you think the uh, rest of the sports industry, and particularly the football industry in the U.S., have, uh, have latched onto this, this opportunity to embrace this space? You know, I don't know that everybody has latched onto it because I don't know that it's a, as a, a driving factor in all the markets as it is in Northern California. I mean, that's really a driving piece here for us. And we wanted to embrace our community for the San Francisco 49ers and really embrace all of Northern California. So I don't know that other teams are doing that because I don't know that anybody's on the cutting edge the way Northern California is. Now, it's not all about sustainability. You talked earlier about uh, making the, the, the new stadium and the team relevant to the local community. 
technology is obviously a big piece of that. Um, and I know you've got some big things planned on the technology front as well. Well, I think first you have to look at user experience. And I think technology enhances user experience, but it doesn't create user experience. And when you've got great companies that are located in, in Northern California, you look at the Fortune 50 companies that are headquartered just within a 15-mile radius of our Santa Clara Stadium, it's, it's unprecedented. So instead of trying to compete with those companies for hardware, we wanted to build software solutions. We wanted to make sure that we are agnostic whether you're using a smartphone that's from Apple, from Samsung, from Google, from whoever is developing those products. You can use that to its fullest extent inside of our stadium. Another feature of sustainability that often gets overlooked is the economic impact um, of one's activities and one's actions. There's big, big economic impact from the decision to move the stadium out here, isn't it? There's a huge economic impact because we're going to host, you know, the 49ers games, we're going to host concerts, we're going to host soccer games, we're going to host a bunch of different events, you know, and, and hopefully we're going to be hosting a Super Bowl that will bring hundreds of millions of dollars of economic impact just from one specific event. And I think that's something that's great for the community. And that's what we've talked about all the way through in 2006 when we shifted our focus from San Francisco to Santa Clara. We talked about what our stadium was going to bring and this stadium that the community is going to own, be a part of, generate revenue from, they're, they're going to really participate. And when you look at the people that are working, you know, we've got 1,600 construction jobs that are going on right now and the economy has started to pick up, but a year and a half ago, two years ago, the, the economy didn't pick up. And this was really one of the first projects that got everybody sort of off the mat and, and got us back up fighting again. Another pillar uh, that's important in the sustainability definition is that of social impact. Um, I know the team's also very involved from a societal perspective. It's, it's very important, again, to be a part of your community, whether you're a sports team or whether you're running you know, any organization. And I think a sports team probably generates more press than just about anybody else. And you look at you know, where we are, we are in the same town that Intel is headquartered. We're about a half a mile away from Cisco's headquarters. And those are much larger organizations than the San Francisco 49ers, but we generate press every single day. We are people that, you know, your kids look up to and, and, and choose to idolize. And if you're, you know, fortunate enough to be in that position, you, you have to take that with, with great responsibility and you have to approach that great responsibility the right way. And I think that's what the 49ers try to do during the season where we have our community events, either Mondays or Tuesdays after our game, depending on the day. And we've had 100% participation, so meaning all of our players are participated in at least one of the community events. And then we raise about $3 million a year through the 49ers Foundation to keep kids safe on track and in school. So all that works together really well. It makes good business sense. You're not doing this because you like to hug trees. Um, any shared experiences or shared um, insights that you'd like to uh, share with the, the YPO community, what you've learned through this process? I think the thing that I've learned is, you know, first and foremost, you know, do something that you're passionate about. And we're passionate about making sure that this team can win with class. And don't be afraid to fail. I mean, we've been told countless times that a stadium couldn't be built the way we were going to build it, where we were going to build it. And, you know, we were labeled failures from just about everybody. And we didn't let that bother us. We didn't let that shake our confidence. And now we're in a position where, you know, there's going to be a brand new stadium built in, in Northern California. This will be the first stadium built in California in over five decades. So when you look at that, that's a big step for us. And, you know, you need to make sure that you, you sort of take that humbly and with respect and continue to push your organization forward. Good. Thanks very much. Thank you.